All right, we begun recording. So welcome everyone. Um, we are here with Ellen and Marky, our, our co-curators for the current show at the Multicultural Arts Center Gallery, Moved to Act. We're really thrilled to have you. My name is Adria Kast, and um, we're just gonna have an open conversation today where we, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about these two curators, and then I'm gonna, we're gonna go into looking at some of the work. So just so you know a little bit about them, Marky Kaufman has been working as a fine arts photographer, educator, and curator for over 30 years, including curating outspoken several women photographers, currently seven, excuse me, seven women uh -huh. photographers, currently touring schools and colleges throughout the Northeast. Kaufman's received numerous awards, including a Massachusetts Cultural Council Arts Artist Fellowship in Photographer in Photography, and she recently won first place in the Soho Photo Gallery's National Alternative Processes Competition, and was a finalist in the seventh edition Julia Margaret Cameron Worldwide Gala Award in three categories, including portraiture, landscape, and fine arts photography. Kaufman is a graduate of Boston University and the New England School of Photography. And you can learn more about her here. I'm gonna put a link in the chat to more about Marky. Ellen Feldman is a fine art photographer, um, a, a photography editor of the Women's Review of Books, which is published by the Wellesley Center for Women at Wellesley College, as well as a photo book artist, including who we march on the 2007, we who march, me, on the 2017 Women's March, and an activist since the 1960s, still marching and working on election campaigns. Her photography work, which includes street photography and long-term personal projects, has appeared in many solo and juried group exhibits. And Feldman holds a PhD in cinema studies from New York University. <laughs> and here's a little more about Ellen. Um, so we're here today to discuss Move to Act. Move to Act Demonstrations, Marches, and Political Actions is a, an exhibition of photographs by outstanding artists across the U.S. that serves as an important statement about the need for all of us to act for justice. Uh, it's an inaugural showing took place at the Davis Orton Gallery in Hudson, New York in 2018. Moose Act includes photographs of several significant political marches and movements, including the 2017 Women's March, the Black Lives Matter March, uh, March for Our Lives, Climate Strike, the Standing Rock Movement, and the March for Science. This exhibit is a clarion call to act to achieve the change we need, and of course, to vote in all elections. The, photo the photographers, mostly women and masters of their craft, have captured dramatic moments in key struggles of our time. This show is about the need to speak out, the determination to fight for justice, and to declare the importance of our differences. Move to Act also appeared in the Rhode Island Center for Photographic Arts in Providence, Rhode Island last fall, encouraging people to act for change and vote in the upcoming election in 2020. And from there, it moved to the Hess Gallery at Pine Manor College in Brooklyn, Mass. And next week, we're so sad to see it go, the show will move to the New England College in Hennifer, New Hampshire. So now let's learn a little bit more about um, the two curators and uh, you guys can both unmute um, and tell us a little bit. I'm gonna just ask, can you tell us about your background to start us off and the types of photography that you enjoy doing? Sure, <clears throat> sure. First of all, I wanna thank um, Adria and Zoe for, for inviting us to uh, exhibit our work, this wonderful work, uh, Move to Act, and, uh, and also for um, allowing us to give this talk today. So thank you guys very much. My pleasure. Um, so about my background in photography, I started photo photographing fairly seriously when I was in my 20s as a black and white photographer using film, of course, and uh, developing and printing in a dark room. Um, then I, I, after that, I kind of was photographing sporadically 
uh, as I joined the workforce and was like a nine to fiver for many years. And then in 2002 or 2003, I became much more serious again. I studied in a, a wonderful workshop called the Atelier that was uh, first started at Radcliffe Institute and then went to Lesley University where I studied with Karen Davis and a couple of other people. And um, then it moved to the Griffin Museum of Photography where it still exists. And I want to just give a quick shout out to Karen Davis who was a wonderful teacher and still teaches me so many things and is my always my mentor. Um, I, I've worked on street photography, I guess, throughout my entire life. And that is the ground from which everything else photographically derives. And um, I do personal projects in addition to my street work, but I always start from street all the time. I'm very comfortable shooting in public and, uh, and it's my passion to do that. So, and in terms of this project, Move to Act, which is my first project where I curated and co-curated a show, I wanna say that there are two other ingredients that helped me work on this project. One is that um, I have a long, long history in political action. And in the US, what I've been doing for years and years is volunteering for candidates for, uh, who are running for election, local, state, and national. My older sister, Joanne, I'm not sure if she's here today, but uh, she was, is a fabulous activist, long time, really serious activist in Austin, Texas. And if you wanna know a difficult state to be a, a liberal and progressive activist in, that's, that's the one. Um, and I followed her lead all the way through life. And we both now work on issues that are important to us and work on campaigns by our favorite candidates. So that history in, in politics, it's interesting that I've never found a way to incorporate that into my photography work until 2016 when Trump won the, uh, the election. And after that, soon after that, um, the Women's March was organized and I did become involved in that. And um, I'll be talking about that later. But uh, my activism now does have a photographic, um, uh, it, it's my photographic work also. So that's kind of, that's kind of uh, where I am photographically now. So Marky. Uh, yeah, as, as background, uh, I would say that uh, I've always been in love with photography. Um, I was never a reader. I was more of a looker as a kid. So I love looking at National Geographic and Life and Look magazines. I was also very compelled by the photography that came out of the Vietnam War. Um, in college, I took a couple of photo classes, especially in Paris, France. So a shout out to all the Parisians that are in this group, thanks to Ellen. Uh, I lived in Paris and I studied with a French photographer named Claude Le Mans. And um, I fell more and more in love with photography in France. Came back to the United States, graduated from Boston University, worked for a couple of years and went to the New England School of Photography, enrolled in their two year professional program. After I graduated, I literally started teaching in their night school right away in their adult ed program. And I got a job teaching secondary school students, high school students, photography at Buckingham Brown and Nichols School in an independent school in Cambridge. And that's what I did my whole career. I taught high school students in the daytime and I taught adults at night at NISA. Um, I love alternative processes. That's my, my real niche. 
as a fine art photographer, but I've always, always loved journalism as well. Um, since graduating from NISOP, I've been exhibiting my work and curating, really starting right away as soon as I graduated. Um, and that's who I am. Thank you both. It's so interesting. You touched on a lot of great points. And uh, the next one I wanted to ask was just about your growth and development and your range of interests um, and, and any uh, inspiration or motivation for you. Although you did kind of touch on some of those, are there any highlights of um, people or elements of photography that motivate you or inspire you? Did you think to add? Well, I was just going to say a little something I can uh, but I, I mostly said what I wanted to say about photography. So in addition to street photography, now I also do, in addition to the political work, um, a lot of personal projects. And one of them is diptychs. So placing two different photos on one uh, canvas, uh, me and my mother. So my mother, a photo that I took a long time ago, and one of me kind of modeling myself on her position, posture, gesture, um, and I have those as diptychs. And another thing that I've done is I've taken uh, inspiration from the abstract expressionist painter, Barnett Newman, whose work I love. And he did these huge canvases of uh, one color field over the whole canvas. And then he have a strip or what he called zip of another co cover, another color down a vert in a vertical line or across in a horizontal line, extremely simple. So I took that idea and now I create my urban zips with street photographs where I have one photo as the ground and another street photo as one of these zips or stripes across the, can uh, across the photo. So um, it's been a really interesting ride, I have to say. And uh, I love all the work. Thank you. In terms of inspiration, you know, I'm not a photojournalist, but I love photojournalism. So there's a couple that I adore. Um, Lindsay Adario, uh, one of the most amazing photographers that is alive and working today, who she shoots for the New York Times freelance. Uh, so she's an inspiration. Um, and then all the alternative process photographers out there like Jill Enfield and uh, Laura Blacklow, who's a local alternative process photographer, Christopher James, who's also local to Boston. They're sort of my, my heroes in terms of the kind of work that I like, the personal work that I like to do. Wow, fascinating. Oh, I'll just do a little shout out to Sophie Kahl, whose work I love and who I would love to do work like her someday. It's good to have people you idolize, even though yeah. it's, it's you may be the person for someone else. So uh, how about Move to Act itself? Can you tell us about how it came about and what the inspiration I, and, and the mission behind the project was and what you hope to achieve with it and how it's changed over time? Sure, I'll, I'll start out um, because uh, the first, as I said before, I was motivated to work in political uh, photography after uh, Trump was elected in November of 2016. Soon after that, I think it was in later November, um, a few women organized a, a, a march on Washington for the day after inauguration, January 21st, um, 2017. And as soon as that was announced, as soon as that march was announced, I decided I, I was going to do a book. I had done photo books in the past, so um, it was kind of a natural fit for me. At first I decided it was going to, I was going to Washington, I would take photos, it would be my book. Then I decided, okay, my reach isn't that great. I was going to invite other photographers. I ended up inviting 30 photographers to participate and to send me photos after the march. So I sent out the invitation in late November or early December. Um, then I also decided, because I love words and because I think text is really important in this situation, to invite the photographers to speak to people there at their marches to get their uh, email address 
send it to me and I would contact them to see if they could write up something that I could include in the book. Um, it turns out I was one of the few, I see Liz Bulkley here is here. She also got one, got it, somebody to, a little girl actually, to uh, describe what it meant to her to go to the march. But I reached out to a number of people um, after the march and got some really, really wonderful texts about how they were feeling about the moment in history and also about attending whichever march that they attended. So I put that book together that's called um, We Who March and I gave it its own website. If anybody wants to go and look, a lot of the photos are up there. Um, but after I, after I put the book together, Karen Davis and I were talking about an, a political exhibit and she suggested, why don't we have an exhibit at her? She has a gallery called the Davis Orton Gallery in Hudson, New York. Why don't we put together an exhibit of many contemporary demonstrations and marches, not only the Women's March, but there were many other issues um, such as Black Lives Matter that we could cover. So Karen herself was way too busy as she always is. So I reached out to Marky to help me um, curate the show because uh, I knew about Outspoken, the work that she had curated. She's also curated many, many other shows. And uh, she was actually the perfect person. We, I think we fit like glove on hand. We were so complimentary. And honestly, Marky, you were like a great partner. So thank you very much for that. And now you can take it over. <laughs> yeah, um, it was wonderful to meet Ellen. I mean, literally we had met maybe once before she asked me to help her curate uh, this show. It was hard, it was a lot of research. We did a tremendous amount of research the summer of 2018. We went on Lens Scratch, that wonderful photo site, and we also went on social documentary looking for photographers. We also uh, called upon two experts in the field that we know, one of whom is Paula Tugnarelli. I don't know if she's here today, but she's the executive director and curator at the Griffin Museum of Photography. She was also my night school student at NISOP years ago. And so we called upon Paula to help us find women and also Emma Raines, who was my photo student at Buckingham Brown and Nichols years ago. And Emma is now the program director at Magnum Foundation. And they have a vast, vast network of photographers. So for instance, Candace Washington, who might be here today, I hope she is. I tried and tried to get in touch with Candace, but I couldn't, couldn't find her email anywhere. And then I literally wrote to Paula Tugnarelli and the next day, Candace Washington is writing me back. Um, so, so those two women, Emma and Paula helped us a tremendous amount gathering up the, the people that we needed, uh, wanted in this show. So they were a huge help. Um, so that's, that's how we put it together. Um, you know, we were looking for really strong images, beautifully lit, beautifully composed, but we were also looking for a, a rainbow of pictures of, of the rainbow of people that are America. So black, white, straight, gay, you name it, we looked for it in terms of the people depicted, but also in terms of the photographers in the show. So we looked for this rainbow of, of photographers to represent what is all of America. I'd just like to add one thing, which is that um, many of the photographers were not, uh, were not specializing in political photography or in uh, editorial photography, uh, but they brought whatever their background was to the events that they, that they photographed, that they covered. And uh, so I think that you'll see that there are many that, that there are many different styles in these photographs, many approaches to photography, even though they're kind of all grounded now in this documentary approach. So that for me was also really interesting that they might have been, that they might mainly be docu uh, landscape, portrait photographers, uh, family photographers, abstract, but whatever it was now, 
they are photograph photography activists and that's very important for all of us i think that's i think a perfect segue to get us to looking into some of the images um, thank you for all of that background although that's very interesting let's i think take a moment now to for you guys to pull up some of the images that are um some that you want to highlight and tell us a little bit about what what the protest was, where that was taken, and about what you find important or significant about, about that work. Sure. Oh. Do you see that? Not yet. Not oh. yet. Okay, there we go. now you will. There we go. There we go. Okay, uh, so I'm going to start. This photograph is by a photographer named Jane Fulton Alt from the Women's March in New Orleans in 2017. This is my one of my favorite pictures in the show because, you know, the sign says, you see a girl, I see the future. The facial expression on this girl's face, I think has a, a quiet confidence that I love. And also I, I, I do see the future as female. Uh, men have controlled this planet for eons and not doing such a great job right now. So I do see the, the girls as the future. Oh, oh. why am I not? Mm. Oh, okay. Uh, this one is by Anu Palakanathu Matthew, a Rhode Island based photographer. Again, one of my favorite pictures in the show. This girl just beaming with pride at being female. I'm a girl, girls are strong. What I particularly love about this photograph is the light and also the pink. I, I've decided that I love the color pink, that I'm taking back the color pink, which has been, I think, um, put down. Uh, but here she's embracing the color pink and I, I just love this picture. This by Lindsay Height, who was one of my photo students in high school, Weston High School, where I taught for many years. Uh, and I, I love this because of the joy in this woman's face, these women's faces, at being together at this march. Uh, all sorts of women, all sorts of ages, gathering together. This is at the Boston Women's March. Uh, this by Candace Washington uh, from uh, the Atlanta Women's March in 2017. I love the expression on this woman's face. She has this kind of fierce power in her face. Also, the, the poster that she's holding up is a quote from the famous uh, sort of warrior poet, Audre Lorde, who was a uh, African-American feminist uh, and fought for LGP rights, LGBT rights, um, rights for uh, African-American people and rights for women, uh, a, a very powerful uh, a mentor to many Black women in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. This is by Sarah Hilton, who photographed the Women's March in New York City for the New York Times. I love this picture because what from, from Hilton's vantage point, She's up high shooting down on the crowd and it is a river of protesters. It is a river of women, uh, an ocean of women pouring down the street. I just think this is a very powerful image. Uh, and this is by Rusty LaFell. I pronounce it LaFell. Um, this is, you know, we put this picture in because it's funny. Uh, we added a little bit of humor here and there in this show. Uh, I think this is one of the funniest pictures I've ever seen. You know, so many issues, so little sign. And again, the expression on this woman's face is like, come on everybody, you know, uh, we have so much to deal with. And on this sign, she's written every single protest, every single issue that she's worried about. And there's a lot of them. Okay, so um, now I'm going to speak about a photo by Tira Khan. Tira, are you here? If you are, unmute yourself. No, I guess she didn't make it. Um, she thought she might. Um, so this is called The People Speak, 
and it was taken at the Women's March 2017 in Washington, DC. Um, when I look at this, when I look at this uh, photo, I see a, cr a huge crowd of people, but I also see one plus one plus one. And one plus one plus one makes millions of people. When we march in a huge crowd, as we did in January 21st, 2017, we become energized and ready to act, to protest, to commit to something larger than ourselves. But if you think about it, each person made his or her own choice to go to that march that day. Political action comes down to one plus one plus one. The sum of all participants makes a movement. And if you think about it, there are some people who don't go because don't vote because they don't think their vote counts. They're only one person. I know I don't have to convince any of you, but I just say one plus one plus one makes an election work. So that's that's my tirade on this. But this is a wonderful photo. And that one person, this actually says it so well because that one big banner doesn't say I am here, it says we the people. One person makes the mass. This is a photo by Nicole Buchanan from the Women's March 2017 in Atlanta, Georgia. I love this photo because of the way it moves from lower left to upper right. From the little black girl on the bottom to the Muslim woman whose shirt says unapologetically Muslim and up to the, the white man or he might be um, some other uh, background and off into the world. And I just, I just love this so much. I think it says such power, it speaks so powerfully to what happens when we are a community of diverse people. This is a photograph by Laura Brody and it's called 10 Resistors. And it's also from the, most of uh, the, a good number of the photos that we're showing at the beginning will be from the Women's March 2017. This was in Washington DC of 10 uh, Muslim women, very joyous, very proud. And uh, even with, uh, with this emblem of the same woman, um, now a Muslim woman covered with the American flag, very powerful. And, um, and uh, that was a joyous day in Washington, DC. And they, they really demonstrate the joy that, that some people felt, that we all actually felt. Is Laura here? Did I ask that already? No. OK. This is a work uh, photographed by Matthew Butkus called Love Unites which you can see on the poster. And it's uh, in New Orleans, at the Women's March. Um, there were so many people with children there. Uh, they're teaching them early the value of fighting for what they believe in. And I wanna read quickly just a statement that Matthew wrote about his project. He says, love unites expresses this solidarity. <clears throat> It's a reminder that we ought not to be divided by partisan forces or political rhetoric. Dehumanization of the other is a recurring theme in political persecution and hatred feeds into it. Hatred of other groups takes us down a path culminating in genocide and crimes against humanity. Recognizing the common, huma common humanity in others is critical especially with, in those with whom we vehemently disagree. Oops. Oh, and sorry. We move on now to Maya Myers, New York City Women's March called Our Lives. As Marky said before, we look for photos of people of all identities. And here we have two loving lesbians. Um, and uh, 
it's just a powerful statement. Our lives and begin, our lives begin and end the day we become, and you can fill in those words instead of the word of silence. This photo is by Kelly Donnelly. Uh, she was at the march in Washington, DC. This is called, We Won't Go Back. Um, the We Won't Bo Go Back refers to before the time when people in the US had legal protection to have an abortion. That was in the Supreme Court decision, Roe versus Wade. And uh, I remember the days before Roe when women used various methods to self-induce abortions. Women threw themselves downstairs. They ingested, ingested poisons and yes, they also used hangers. I read uh, yesterday that officially around 200 women died per year in the years before Roe by inducing their abortions. The actual numbers of course very much higher than that. I love this photo just because it's so, it's actually um, nice to have it after that really depressing photo of uh, life before Roe. Um, but this is joyous. The lighting is so spectacular. It's such a gorgeous photo. And so when she says fear is the path to the dark side, what we see is this gorgeous light. And also the two birds um, flying on the upper left is, is really a gift to us all. Uh, Jane Fulton Alt wrote, wrote um, there is a, a great power in coming together in the name of social justice and equality. With camera in hand, my hope is that the visual images will be a strong reminder of our political power that cannot and will not be silenced. And this is sorry that the image is small, but it's still powerful. This is by Nina uh, Weinberg Duran. Nina, are you here? If you are, unmute yourself and declare yourself. She said she might be. Guess not. Um, this woman is looking at us directly. She's in quite a close up, we say medium shot. And beha behind her is a crowd. She is definitely one individual part of a community. Now, uh, Marky, this is yours. Yep. Um yeah, I'm, I'm going to move a little faster because we're running out of time. Uh, oh. But this is Luke Jordan. And uh, one of the things Luke Jordan said uh, when he went to the women's marches, uh, he, he loved all the signs and even the back of the signs had something to say. Uh, and I love this one. That, again, embracing the color pink. Uh, um, by Natalie Oppen Obermeyer. Love this one with the pink pussy hats. It's a mother and daughter. I love that it's the back side of them because they become every mother and daughter who went to this march uh, to speak up for justice. This is by Belinda Sonsini from the Boston March. She, she titles this protest, but I would title this love. Uh, and isn't that what we all want? We just all wanna like each other get along with each other. Okay, I'll also go through these more quickly because um, we are running out of time. So uh, now we move on to Black Lives Matter marches. This photo is by Sheila Pre Bright, the silent march in Atlanta, Georgia in 2016. And you can see, I, we hardly need words to express how powerful this photo is with the um, extreme close up. The background is all blurred, so we really are focused just on his face and honestly, for me, on his eyes because they look so sad and um, full, full of emotion. Uh, 
This photo <clears throat> is called Unarmed. It's by Nicole Buchanan. <clears throat> it was taken <clears throat> at a KKK Ku Klux Klan rally in 2016 in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, <clears throat> what's interesting to me about this, this is a, is, this is shot, <clears throat> pardon me. This is shot head on. Nicole had to crouch down to be at the level of, of this black man who was being uh, held down by two cops. It, it might be a little bit hard to see, but one black and one white cop are holding this, this man down. And around that, you just see like a community of legs. And uh, these, these men have become depersonalized and dehumanized, but this man is uh, at the center of our attention right now. I Can't Breathe. Um, this was by uh, Ellen Schub, a very, um, an extremely accomplished uh, documentary photographer who unfortunately uh, passed on in 2019. Um, and there, there are two, there are, uh, of course, too many black men who were held down by cops and um, were killed and now, uh, now we are crying out for racial justice. Eric Gardner, uh, Eric, excuse me, Eric Gardner was killed in 2014 by police and his last words were, I can't breathe. And then George, George Floyd was killed in a simil similar way and his last words were, I can't breathe. So this is a, a very well known in the US rallying cry for protesters um, and crying for racial justice. This photo is by Gabriel, uh, Gabriela Demschuk. It's called, it's called Black Lives Matter, oh, Baltimore Sings the Blues, Black Lives Matter March 2015 in Baltimore. This is powerful because of the use of the reflection. The, the little child is obviously has so much more power than that lineup of cops. It's a beautiful photo. Okay, so um, this is another Black Lives Matter George Floyd protest image by Keiko Hiromi. When I spoke with Keiko or when she wrote to me about this image, she said she had gone to something like 20 George Floyd protests last summer. And every time she went, she felt sort of embarrassed and sad that we had to be at this again and again and again, protesting Black Lives Matter. But she also felt hopeful. Uh, and I just find this an extraordinary image. I too am America. This is by Julia Vargas Jones. I don't know if she's here, but she also was one of my students at Weston High School and now works for CNN. This is the George Floyd protest in Los Angeles last summer. And when she described this to me, she said, I see the fires as little fires everywhere for change. This is by Gabriela Demchik, uh, again, who did the Baltimore Sings the Blues. She also photographed the March for Our Lives movement a protest on March 24th after the shooting at Marjorie Stoneham Douglas High School on Valentine's Day in 2018. So this is an image of uh, David Hogue, Hog, I'm not sure how you pronounce his last name, an 18-year-old boy who's standing in front of masses and masses of protesters, such an articulate young man who was part of that movement, never again, never again. More uh, March for Our Lives by Gabriela Dumchik uh, from that rally movement protest in Washington, DC. Can I just read out the sign? Every sure. day I walk into school wondering if I'm going to die today. Imagine. Uh, and this is the last picture by Gabriela Dumchik. Uh, 
This is the famous Emma Gonzalez, whose six minutes of silence during that protest will go down in history. Such a remarkable young woman. And David Whitney, who photographed the March for Our Lives in Boston, David Whitney did an incredibly powerful body of work at this protest, but also, and look for him on his website, he went to a, a number of Sandy Hook, uh, the graveyards of places where lots of the Sandy Hook children were buried and photographed their tombstones. It's a remarkable, remarkable body of work, uh, David Whitney. This is a photo by Amber Bracken. It's called Standing Rock, 2016, 2017. Oh, sorry, it was taken at Standing Rock, Cannonball, North Dakota, and it's called Two Nations. And the interesting thing for me is, um, is that it, it's such a powerful picture with these two flags. I, uh, I found out that the smaller flag in the, in the distance is the Mohawk Nation flag. Um, Amber Bracken wanted me to make it clear that uh, for water, um, for water protectors of Standing Rock, it was a resistance, but it was not a protest. So I just wanted to make that clear to everybody here. And uh, it is a powerful statement. This is by Sam Kaufman, um, Defend Science. Oh, excuse me. It was by Sam Kaufman, uh, Defend Science. Uh, in the March for Science 2017 in Boston, Massachusetts. Um, and I want to just draw your attention. This, this photo was taken in 2017. Keep calm and vaccinate. This was not about coronavirus. This was about our, the flu that we have every year. Keep calm and vaccinate. So this, uh, this sign is as appropriate today as it was then. The, um, my final images here are Rus both Rusty Leffel. This is, and they're both on climate strike. Um, this is fight for a Green New Deal. And it's from Kansas City, Missouri. And this one, also a funny one, is uh, by Rusty. Uh, Speaks for the trees, climate strike, Kansas City, Missouri. Yeah, uh, and last, these are my last few images. This is by Suzanne Siner, who was one of my students at Buckingham Brown Nichols years ago. I knew that she had gone to the climate strike in Boston, so I asked her if I could have a photograph of that event. I also knew that she went with her teenage daughter. Ellen and I really wanted an image by a teenager to be part of this show to represent the climate strike because of Greta Thunberg. Uh, that Greta had influenced kids for all over the world to walk out of school to protest climate change. And uh, we wanted a teenager to be part of that. So this is Suzanne's picture called climate lesson number one. And the next image is by her daughter, Talia Morell. And this is one of my favorite pictures in the whole show. Talia was on her way to the climate strike at Boston City Hall that day when she was gonna take the subway with her friends from Harvard Square. Uh, and so her friends are holding this sign that says, if you were smarter, we'd be in school. And this sign, this sentiment could be generalized to all of the protests that we've been speaking about today. It could be about COVID. It could be about March for Our Lives. It could be about Black Lives Matter. It could be about anything. Uh, so this, this is one of the best images and we were so happy to have a teenager along. And this is the final image that we're gonna show you from the, from the show. And this is by Evan Whitney. And it's at the protest 
a pro-immigration protest in late January 2017. So Donald Trump is just president and he's issued his Muslim ban. Uh, so this woman is, you know, pulling this American flag behind her and he describes it as being like a curtain that she's pulling along, you know, a, a, America. She's she's literally pulling America along with her. Uh, I see her almost as the Statue of Liberty in this image, uh, screaming and shouting for justice in America. Oh, sorry. Uh, and this is um, a couple of strange ones. This is from a tr pro-Trump rally in the Bay Area by Gabrielle Agnati Jones. She went to a bunch of uh, pro-Trump rallies uh, recently and every one of them turned violent, she said. And we'll end with this one because this is where we're at now in COVID land. This is again by Rusty LaFell. Our mask protects me, thank you. My ma your mask protects me, thank you. My mask protects you. You're welcome. And thank you all for coming. So these, this is uh, where we're moving next is New England College, if anybody lives in New Hampshire, Henniker, New Hampshire. Thank you so much for sharing that. And you can leave this up on the screen for a minute so that people can, can take a look at it. Um, oh, you, they can take screenshots. It, they you can take a screenshot, screenshot. Yeah, certainly. Um, so I just, I want to invite us now uh, to, to move into a Q&A section of the chat. So if you would like to either unmute yourself and ask a question, um, or you can use the raise your hand feature and we can, we can make time for you. Um, or you are also welcome to type something in the chat if you'd like us to read it aloud. Uh, we need to have some time now to, to ask our burning questions of Ellen and Marky. Um, and one question that did come through is just if you would post the names of the photographers, um, it, is there a place where people can find the names of all the photographers you've mentioned today on the, online somewhere? Yes, if you go to the um, uh, Cambridge, to your website, the Cambridge uh -huh. um, Multi the Multicultural Arts Center, if you go to that exhibit, there is a place where you enter the exhibit, but if you also click on one of the arrows, it will list like all the names in alphabet. I think it's in alphabetical order. Okay. So, yeah, maybe we can we can drop a link to the virtual gallery in the chat for people to, to get yeah. to. Great. Okay. Yeah, that would be good. <laughs> so lots of thank yous coming in. I, I have one question if if um Nobody else wants to jump in ahead of me. Um, I'm just curious right now where we're at with the change in the administration. What's the next, like what's the role of this show going forward? Um, is it, are these questions and issues still universal or are they particularly American in some way that relates and how does it relate to the new administration being in the presidency? Actually, um, I have a couple thoughts on that. One thing is, Black Lives Matter is now pretty much a universal, it's in those words. I believe in France, they say Black Lives Matter, for example, they, they don't translate it into French. Also, let me just say, climate change will become such an important issue over the next few years. We've already lost so much time. We are in climate change. We are not like facing it in the future. So that will become huge. Um, in the United States, there are so many issues. <laughs> the, all the issues with, were, that were on that person's uh, sign, so many issues, so little space or whatever. So that uh, anybody can just grab one and run with it. So these things are all very important still. Racial justice. Uh, housing, yeah, just, housing shortage. Women. Yeah, go, go, go. No, well, justice for women, right? W women. Oh, yes. Let's right. not forget that. I mean, we're in the middle of, you know, Andrew Cuomo. Yeah, me too. Me too. Yeah. 
Can you unscreen, I, Ellen, just because maybe we'll see other people's faces? Oh, yeah. I'm going to stop share. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Excellent idea. Thank you. Questions, anybody? Comments? Luke Jordan is raising a hand. Oh, great. Um, I just want to thank you two for all your hard work and all the venues, um, but you guys have really banged away at this for quite some time now. And um, I appreciate it. Um, one, one other thing that I would just like to ask about, or it's really a comment is, um, I got the request to um, use my photo sort of out of nowhere. And so I had no idea the request was coming. And so it's a reason to check your email <laughs> um, because you never, you just never, you just never know. So, so I thank you guys for reaching out and finding me, however it was you found me. Yeah. And your picture sold. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm going gonna, gonna to retire now. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. I mean, I think we were so happy to have it at the Davis Orton originally, but then when the election was coming up, we knew we wanted it to be up during the election season. And the Rhode Island Gallery, Rhode Island Center for Photographic Arts gave us this perfect time slot between October 15th and November 13th. We were on the walls of a gallery in Providence, Rhode Island, where there are hundreds of colleges. And Ellen and I were hoping that we would get millions of college kids to see the show and galvanize them to get out to vote. And COVID threw such a monkey wrench into that. But still we got because it was online, people got to see the show and thank God for these online galleries in the middle of COVID. Yes, honestly, I think probably more people saw the show than could have ever appeared in Rhode Island or Cambridge. Yeah. But it would have been fun to have a lot of college kids come to see that show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But thanks, Luke. Oh, so Emily, you're there. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Marky and Ellen, I, I just love this show. And hey, having, gone, having been in uh, a student at Brown during the Vietnam War protests, we actually marched down the hill right past where David DeMellum's gallery is now. So wow. Wow. Um, what a piece of history, Marcy. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah, we, we actually shut down the college for a large part of spring semester and wow. did, did teach-ins and- <clears throat> That's so brown. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, we and I over, sat in on, oh, excuse me. And we took over the administration building, University Hall, and uh, it was a pretty dramatic time, um, so. Yes, yeah. yeah. I, Our, at, at the we're thrilled I, about having oh, paid sorry. the tuition and not having classes for probably the last two months of school. But um, I'd say I learned actually probably as much in those teachings as I did or would have in my classes. So, but sure. didn't you go to teachers' homes to take to have class? That's what we did at Columbia. No, <laughs> ah. <laughs> New York. It's different than Rhode Island. Yeah. I no, it's that. Brown is what it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah um, I was, uh, I occupied the president's office at Columbia in 68. Yeah, that was another thing. Yeah, that was, that was pretty inspiring. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So, but yeah. yes, but during that time, yeah, we took classes at our, at our professor's apartments. We didn't have Zoom then. Yes. That was good. <laughs> Neither did we, but. Uh, yeah. No, they, they organized, as I recall, like an entire curriculum of classes that, you know, the various people taught. I think possibly professors were involved in teaching some of those because they were certainly involved in the protest marches, but um, they weren't necessarily art classes or, you know, biology classes or any of the other things that might have been going on at that period of time. Right. Fabulous story. Yeah, really. Yeah. 
I still have my striped shirt, actually. Yeah. <laughs> great. That's great. Well, we maybe have time for one last question if there are any. All right. Well, I, I know that Ellen and Mark, you've both given out their contact information. And so you're definitely welcome to reach out to them with any further questions. Um, and we're excited to see where this show goes next. And so thank you for sharing about the work that it's the, the lifespan of the show so far and onward on to the next one. So our show at the Multicultural Arts Center um, is going to be struck next week. We're sad to see it go, um, and, but it's going to move on to the next, the next exhibit. Um, if you would, we have another show coming in afterwards, which I just like to let everyone know it's um, the work of Lindsay Rothrock. It's called With, um, and her work explores how we perceive each other and the world around us, and how those perceptions shape our outward interactions and our self definition. Um, so we're, uh, we're thrilled to have you guys here. And um, I'm just going to drop into the chat in case anyone would like to. Um, learn more about us uh, there's at the Multicultural Arts Center. You can sign up for our newsletter or follow us on Instagram uh, or Twitter. And there's some information for us there. Uh, we also have a rolling call for art for the gallery. So if you are interested in putting a show together um, or curating a show uh, similarly to how Ellen and Mark you did, uh, there is a, a link to a form that you can fill out to let us know if you're interested. And here is that information. Um, and let me just say you. they're fabulous people to work with. So I encourage <laughs> you to put on a show with them. Thank you. And thank you so much, Adria. And thank you all the people that came today, especially the artists. Uh, it was wonderful to see Luke Jordan, who I've never seen in the flesh before, uh, and uh, people like that. So. Um, Rusty, anybody who's here that is in the show, thank you for coming. Yes, thank you, thank you, everyone. Thank you, all the people from Paris. I will <laughs> see you again soon. Yeah. Au revoir. Yeah. Au revoir. Au revoir. Au revoir. Au revoir. Au revoir. Thank you. Thank you thank very you much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.